Hi, everybody. My name is Rafa Lombardino, and this is Translation Confessional. Before we continue, let me tell you a bit about Squarespace. I've been using it for both my corporate and my professional websites, and it's made a world of difference for my business. First of all, it saves me a lot of time because their web designing platform is so easy to use. I don't have to figure things out. I just add different elements to a page, check if it looks pretty, and publish it. I can move things around quickly and adjust my homepage as needed, so I can let you know about my upcoming classes, webinars, and speaking events. I've added different sections to the menu too, as my content has started to grow, and everything is organized perfectly. Besides, Squarespace allows me to see what each page will look like in different formats, whether people are visiting my website on a computer, tablet, or smartphone. That way, I can make sure nothing looks clunky and everyone can get the information they need in a visually pleasant way. I can also check out some behind-the-scenes information to confirm that my outreach efforts are working. I can see where the traffic to my website is coming from, what keywords visitors used on Google searches to get to my content, and where in the world my audience is located, which is perfect when I want to explore some opportunities with translation clients in different markets. If you don't have a professional website yet, or if your current setup has let you down, I know for a fact that Squarespace is exactly what you need to recreate your business image and your brand so clients can find you. To give Squarespace a try and get 10% off your hosting plan, go to this webpage, bit.ly slash t3 dash Squarespace. That way, they'll know that you've heard about them here at Translation Confessional. Once again, the webpage is bit.ly slash t3 dash s-q-u-a-r-e S-P-A-C-E. Hope you like it. Toxic Translation Today, I'll do something a bit different than what I've been doing for the past few episodes. I'll actually read someone else's text because this is just a very good piece of writing that I wanted to share with you, but you have to have an open mind and understand that this is a very sarcastic piece. It's full of jokes and should be seen as something funny that is also criticism towards our profession. So the title of this article is Toxic Translation, a 12-step program for self-injuring translators. It was originally written by Wendell Ricketts, an Italian-to-English translator, and posted to his website, provenright.com. That's proven right, as in writing, dot com. Wendell Ricketts is a writer, translator, and editor. In addition to The Wrong Door, The Complete Plays of Natalia Ginsburg, published by the University of Toronto Press, he is the translator of Woman Bites Dog, The Mafia's War on Italian Women Journalists. Trilobites, the Back to the Past Museum Guide, among other works. His translations have appeared in Words Without Border, World Literature Today, and other literary magazines. His micro publishing house, Four Cats Press, was founded in 2014. So, just to clear it up, I did seek his authorization to record this, and the opinions expressed in this article are those of the author and don't necessarily express my opinions, even though I agree with a lot of what he's saying here. I'm also adding a link to this episode's description so you can read his article. Just be warned that I made some very slight changes to the content so it fits the audiovisual format. I hope you enjoy it and find it funny, and also learn some things that you can change in your mentality as a translator. Number one, 
Admit that you are powerless over translation agencies. Number two, make a searching and fearless inventory of the times you have found yourself saying, I might as well take this job for 0.000005 per word. If I don't, someone else will. Or, a client who pays regularly at 8,275 days is still better than one who doesn't pay at all. Or, agencies are a business like any other. It's only natural that they try to make as much money as possible. Acknowledge that the justification of unjustifiable behavior is an addiction and that your life as a translator has become unmanageable. Number three, prepare to receive a truth of the universe in nine words. Translation rates are dropping because translators accept low rates. If you want rates to stop descending, you must take your finger off the elevator button immediately. There's no methadone for people who are willing to translate for half what the average busboy makes. So the only way to combat this addiction is cold turkey. Make amends by explaining clearly each time you respond to an insulting offer, refuse a low-wage job, or decline an invitation to lower your rates, why it is that you are doing so. I know Miss Manners says we're not supposed to tell crass, rude people that they are crass and rude, but she'd make an exception if she were a translator. Low payers are the abyssopelagic feeders of the sea of translation. Do not hesitate to send them back to filter the woos whence they came from. Number four. If you are truly living on dog food, cannot pay rent, or are slipping your child some thinly diluted glue because it's cheaper than milk, You have an excellent excuse to accept offensive working conditions and insulting wages. Temporarily. While you look for a job that pays you a living wage and doesn't screw your colleagues who depend on translation for their livelihood. Otherwise, you don't have an excuse. Not everything in life is black and white. But this is. Meanwhile, if you are not truly in need, Stop using that pretext to justify your participation in the destruction of the profession. It might happen to any of us to find the wolf at the door, but he isn't at everyone's door all the time. Don't use the real misery of others to disguise the fact that you couldn't locate your self-respect with a Sherpa guide and a GPS. Number five. Conversely, If your parents are still paying your rent and buying your groceries, your husband is the CEO of a big company, or you're a trust fund baby who just loves languages, do some good for the profession and your immortal soul and start translating for free. There are dozens, if not hundreds, of worthy nonprofit organizations who could use your help. In the meantime, some of us are trying to earn a living here. Your pin money rates are killing translators who depend on translation as their sole source of income. Number six, accept the fact that your degree from Acme School of Language Mediation or the Fingerhurst Academy of Translationology is substantially worthless. Translation is learned in the field, not in the classroom. If you are nonetheless a recent graduate of such a program, here's what to do until you're truly prepared to command professional rates. Apprentice yourself to a translator you trust. Donate translations to a worthy cause in order to build your resume. Spend your free time doing practice translations for your personal development. Improve your ability to write in your target language. Read a lot in both languages. Do not offer cut-rate translations or beg clients to let you work for practically nothing because you just love translating. Why not? 
for the same reason that there's a sign at the zoo that says don't feed the monkeys. Because if you do, they get fat and lazy and never learn the professional. Well-qualified bananas are not handed around for free. I'm sure you've heard that Audible is the leading library for audiobooks, right? But have you given it a try yet? There are literally hundreds of thousands of titles you can choose from, and you'll be saving tons of money if you sign up for a premium account. For $14.99 a month, you get one credit to download any book you want, whose price tag is usually around 20 bucks or so. Right there, you'd be saving money and keeping up with your book addiction at the same time. They have books in different languages too, and some classics are for free, so you don't have to apply your monthly credit to it. You just download the audiobook and enjoy it. And that goes without saying that they have some exclusive content read by incredible actors. So if you close your eyes, it really feels like you're at a theater listening to a play on stage. On top of that, you can also check out the latest trending podcasts. And yes, you can listen to Translation Confessional on Audible too. If you're not yet sure whether Audible is right for you, I dare you to give it a try. Get a 30-day trial and enjoy your first book for free. But I bet you get hooked on it and add audiobooks to your routine. Make sure you use the link in this episode's description so they'll know Translation Confessional sent you their way. Then come back to me and let me know what books you're listening to. I hope you enjoy it! Number 7. Stop allowing clients to dictate your fees and working conditions. Do you really need me to trot the analogy out for you one more time? Do you? Really? Fine. Here it is. You sit down to eat in a restaurant. After consulting the menu, you call the owner over to your table. This steak is overpriced, you say. I'll pay half, and I want you to throw in a bottle of wine with that. If you don't get everything on my table within 10 minutes, though, the deal is off. What happens in a restaurant is that they toss you out on your stern. What happens in translation is that you say, Oh, yes, Mr. Client. Thank you, Mr. Client. May I please have another, Mr. Client? Three words. Knock it off. Number eight. Stop using the internet until you learn how. The free dictionary is not a professional resource, and word reference is not a forum where you can consult with reliable and knowledgeable colleagues. And about half the answers on pros.com kudos board are wrong. Wiki is often worth the paper it's printed on. Google is not your friend. Go do some searches with misspelled words and grammar errors. Then we can talk about how internet searches can be so helpful in confirming correct usage. Gosh, translation turns out to be tougher than you thought, huh? Number nine. If a client doesn't pay you on time, or doesn't pay you at all, stop working for that client. Agencies, publishers, and clients who fail to pay as promised are like people who abuse their spouses. They will do it again. The only question is, are you going to be standing there when the next blow comes? Here's a little quiz. They didn't mean to do it. They're just going through a difficult period. And if I leave, who knows if I'll ever find another one? Are these phrases commonly used by abused spouses, self-injury translators, or both? Number 10. Translation is not a mafia. No one will send you to sleep with the fishes if you fail to maintain a lifelong pledge of omerta. Tell your colleagues when clients don't pay, when they make unreasonable demands, when they revise without telling you, when they insist that you lower your rates, when they forget to put your name on the translation, when they change the agreed-upon conditions after you've already started, 
when they refuse to pay for urgent or after-hours work, when they demand unwarranted discounts. Accepting these conditions silently doesn't make you a wise person. It makes you an accomplice. Number 11. Stand up for your native language. Take pride in seeing it used eloquently, fluently, and well. Take offense when it is abused and disrespected. Don't believe the hype about globalism, world languages, and all the rest. Stop caving in to the absurd and unverified claim that non-native translation is just as valid as native translation. Or that the people who read translations in their second language don't care if they're well-written or not. Your ability to deploy your native language with sophistication, flexibility, and skills is your most important selling point. You may never succeed in convincing everyone of the importance of this issue. But consider this. Many people also find it acceptable to drink wine that comes in boxes, watch Fox News, or buy Lady Gaga CDs. If you're a language professional, you're supposed to be above things like that. Number 12. If there's anything worse than translators who complain all the time, it's translators who complain about translators who complain all the time. Let's suppose you make lots of money, your clients are respectful of your time and expertise, and everyone pays you promptly. If so, let's call what it is. Enormous luck. What it is not is a license to lecture everyone on how they should stop whining and get back to work. The fact that translators complain is a good thing. It indicates self-esteem and an instinct for self-preservation, as distinct from your sense of superiority and every man for himself smugness. If you have nothing to say that helps move the profession forward, and not just your personal little slice of it, at least have the decency to get out of the way of people who are trying to make things better, including for you. Send me an email at rlombardino at wordawareness.com or leave a voice message on my anchor page. If I get enough feedback and voice messages, I can go back to the subject and post a special podcast episode with everyone's opinion on this very same theme. By the way, my anchor page is anchor.fm slash translation dash confessional. I look forward to hearing from you. Stay tuned for weekly episodes and subscribe to Translation Confessional through your favorite podcast app.